podcast for all things strange and unusual, apocalyptic and dystopian, mysterious and morbid, creepy, kooky, and all things da na na na. For six years, we've been getting together once a week to chat about something weird, and year seven is no exception. This season, we're packing in so much strangeness into one place, it should be illegal. So call the cops, I dare you, as we bring you an unsolved mystery out of Arkansas, a kidnapping and a creepy hobby out of Australia, and a terrifying tale about how the world ended once in Serbia, and no one knows why. So it's time to refill that coffee or crack open that croy and prepare yourself for a bumpy ride. My name is Ashley, and this is my co-host, Lauren. Hello, weirdos. Hi. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? Episode five, or as my notes list it, episode six. What happened there, do you think? <laughs> I was wondering the same. You kept texting me like, okay, so for episode four, we do this. And then episode six, we do this. I was like, who deleted like, five? Hey. What happened to five? <laughs> well, what happened to five? <laughs> what have we done? Like that, um, was it Amazon Prime or Netflix, that show that was like, what happened to Monday? What happened to five? Uh, what happened to five? What happened? Five's here. Um, I did want to start the show real quick, and I apologize. I did not, like, prepare anything for this, and I should have, but one of our listeners, Chelsea, what up, girl? Hey, Chelsea. Chelsea sent us a link and said, hey, do you guys know about April Slaughter? And I was like, that is quite a name. Mm-hmm. There was this interview, um, and it's called The Probe. Um, and the creator of the probe, his name is Andy Kopic, C O P P O C. Okay. April Slaughter is one of four individuals, in addition to Kopic himself, who are testing a device called the probe for its possible ability to assist in communicating with those who are no longer living. So mm-hmm. it's a yeah. new EVP recorder, essentially, I believe, mm. as far as I can tell. Uh, it's what an it sounds like. instrumental transcommunication device. April Slaughter calls it the probe. Slaughter said the device, while similar to other devices on the market, is not the same thing. She said he, Kopic, has modified the internal working of the device. Hmm. He started using the device while investigating a paranormal case involving an autistic child. Then after getting unexpected results, he began testing the device in other ways to communicate with the dead, possibly. Yeah. Um, he reached out to April Slaughter because she has a daughter with epilepsy, and there may be a way to help her using the device when she has seizures. Now, oh I found gosh. this interesting because when I was researching EVPs, I found... Uh, a very small little part of an article didn't even have the guy's name so I couldn't look up more about him but I like wrote a note in my head to try and find more about this guy Uh there's a guy in California who uses EVP recordings who uses like devices to record and he claims that he can talk to animals using it that he's gotten EVPs while sitting with animals that seem to be communicating what the animal is thinking. Interesting. Now, I don't know <laughs> if any of this is real. It's true. I just yeah. thought I would it's bring more creepy EVP news to the listeners. I mean, and might as know well. <laughs> that there Here are people it. that are still working on it today. And oh my gosh. you may wake up one day and find that we can talk to these mofos. We can talk to the dead. My to gosh. The dead. To the or the dead. beyond. Or, or the, animals, whatever. Or another realm brain. or a tiger. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> All of the above. Uh, but let's hop right into it today. We've got four very weird stories for you. Lauren is going to start us off. I'm going to start us off with Australian news. Australian news. Rip on the barbie. Hello. <laughs> Hello all. I really hope that I'm just going to stop right there. I was going to try yeah, and go Yeah, well, on. we had it. We're going to get Australian the phrase news. Australian news down really well Australian in an Australian news. dialect. 
<laughs> I was going to say, I really hope that Alex can't like pick my sound up because he works with pretty much all Aussies and oh, good. he could be on a Zoom call with many Australian people right now who would say, what was that horrible, horrible, horrible sound we just heard from? Australian news. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <clears throat> so Australian news. <laughs> There is an artist, um, this was from a March 7th story, so pretty, pretty recent, last month, 2023. Yeah. There is an artist, an Australian artist, um, that sent out a newspaper ad, originally anonymously, calling on someone to donate their dead body for an art installation. Oh. And he is adamant that this move is not a gimmick He's very serious about it. Um, this is an important art installation, and it, it was a real is ad. It um, legal? <laughs> well, we're going to get into that. Okay. But I wanted to read first what his ad said. Palawa, he keeps referring to himself that he's a Palawa artist, or Palawa, if I'm not saying that correctly. I apologize. Tried. It is, yeah, Tasmania's indigenous people. So okay. to continue on, he's saying, for the past sins perpetrated against the Palawa, Potential applicants should see this opportunity as an honor. The body and the memory of the successful applicant will be treated with the utmost respect at all stages of the project. Email inquiries to palawaartist at yahoo.com. Which I always judge people a little bit that have a Yahoo email address, but I mean, it's fine. <laughs> Just Yahoo, kidding. Hotmail, MSN. Yeah. <laughs> MSN, yeah. Like, come on. Get into the modern day. Even iCloud. I'm like, iCloud. iCloud. Come on. Nice. Let's just Gmail or bust. Gmail. <laughs> Gmail. Outlook. If Outlo you must. Yes. If Gmail. you must. <laughs> so originally this came out as anonymous and people were excited slash disgusted slash intrigued yeah. slash, you know, just curious, nosy, all Interested. of the things. So he got people stoked just last month. Um, the ad was in the classified section of a Melbourne newspaper called The Age. And, you know, very specific, looking for an Australian of British descent to donate their future deceased body. And then people asked enough questions that finally this anonymous artist was uncovered. And his name is Nathan Maynard. And he has mm -hmm. now done interviews with a couple of different news sources kind of backing himself up. Like, okay, I knew I would get some negative feedback, but hear me out. Here's what's going on. Um, he basically wants to know that if there is anybody out there who is willing to literally put their body on the line to support the indigenous people. It's not a gimmick. It's not a stunt because everybody kept saying, you know, this is just attention seeking. Like, does he really want right. to do anything for the people or is this all on him? But he is very much saying, I am a true artist. This is not a stunt, not a gimmick. I have the real desire to make this work. And I am genuinely wanting somebody's body who is fully in line with what I am doing. It's going to be a tough interview process, all of the above, because he wants people to be on his the same right page. The right person. The right okay. person. It can't just be anybody. Right it needs to be the right body. It has to be, you know, the British descent. But also when he interviews people, he wants them to say, like, I am fully on board with what you're doing. I totally agree. I love your art, blah, blah, blah. So he just wants a compliment. I know. Like, you are and such a true artist. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> we all. We all need that validation. Okay. So, for Mr. Maynard, his quest for remains, which many news outlets flat, quote unquote, flat out refuse to publish due to okay. the nature of his ad, um, part of his wish is to have white Australians acknowledge the damage done to our First Nations people. And he was quoted as saying, if you're upset about this ad, then you should be very upset about the thousands of First Nations remains that are displayed all across the country in museums already. If you're mm. not upset about that, but you're upset about this white person voluntarily giving their body to this work, I think you need to ask yourself a question. So once he said this, I think people actually started to side with him a bit more and kind of yeah. look at... The different museums, I mean, around the world, there are bodies that people have gotten without permission. Like, I, I had to look into it a little bit more, but there are many bodies displayed at different museums and in different collections, which is Every gross mummy. to say. <laughs> Every mummy. They Every didn't have permission. Mummy. They yes. literally built these extravagant, beautiful tombs for these people to 
lay to to spend eternity resting in and we dig them up yeah. and we're like we gotta show the president like we have to show everybody <laughs> i know we dig them up and put them in museums all the time we do whatever and there's no we question, want question yeah there's no question of whether or not we should and it's totally. like mm, maybe we should leave them where we found them Absolutely. And so he is kind of trying to make a statement about that. And now that he's explained it a bit more, people have actually, you know, taken his side. It's still pretty yeah. split down the middle and, you know, people are arguing about it on social media. But um, he definitely had some people volunteer. He said just in the time since he first posted the original ad last month and then once a couple different news outlets picked it up and you know, it's been spread across the internet that about half a dozen people have come forward saying they absolutely will do it, want to volunteer, want to do the interview process. Okay. And then a few others have inquired and said, you know, I'm not committing yet. I have a few questions, but he's getting some people who are willing to do it. And he wants to start this exhibit. This is the part I'm a little confused about. He wants to get this exhibit started in November of this year as part of the Hobart Current Arts Festival, which will be held at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. And the only reason I'm confused is because it has to be these people who die. They have to die in order for him yeah. to have the bodies. So I'm a little confused on that part, but I saw two separate articles. One of them, he was saying that there's going to be kind of phases of this art project. So I'm wondering if November is when he just kind of reveals the idea officially to the public and then says, you know, the bodies are going to be part of the next section or in a few years, whatever. But he wants to kind of introduce the idea, what it's about. Maybe he'll show what the installation will look like with fake bodies. Who knows? But supposedly yeah, in November say, of this year, it's going to premiere. Fake bodies. And because I assume what, and give what, the same what idea. his idea is, is that these bodies would be mummified and put mm -hmm. into on a display and it'd be like right. white bitch from <laughs> you yes, know whatever exactly. township the whitest in of Australia. whites here <laughs> yeah and like give like a description of their life and what their life was like because that's kind of like what we see uh, um, exactly on, you know these bodies that we've exhumed I mean For I sure. think it's a cool idea I don't know how he's gonna pull it off Yes, that was the part that the very last thing I was going to get to is the laws around this. Um, yeah. There's, there is also, there's already a precedent for turning human remains into art in Tasmania with the Museum of Old and New Art displaying people's ashes. That is already something that exists, but apparently for what he is asking for, it looks like it's going to yeah. be a pretty tough legal battle. Um, let's see, Mark Trabsky, an associate professor of law at La Trobe University was quoted as saying, our laws around who can possess a dead body are very, very tight. We have legislation that says you can donate your body for a number of reasons, but they are so very strict. You can't just take a body and whack it. So Australian, whack it into an art gallery or museum. Nope, I lost it. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> I I mean I don't agree. know if you had that's, it, but I don't think I ever had it. But you know, wackadoo. That's from the show Bluey, which is an Australian show that is very cute for children, but also for adults. Little plug I've there. Heard of it. Um, so basically, this is going to be a very tough uphill battle, which is why yeah. I'm sort of like what we were just saying. I think you could make the same statement, but make a fake body yeah. of just like just a white a blonde lady yeah. yeah and just be like look at all these white people on display and i think you can get your same point across hey i appreciate that he wants to go the extra mile and try to put this together i like the but message yeah i just totally. don't know i mean you know there's so many um uh, abuse of a corpse i know type laws yeah. like robert robert durst durst that was one of the crimes he ended up <laughs> not getting charged with, getting away with, uh, mm -hmm. when he accidentally killed his neighbor uh, when they <sighs> fought over a fought over a gun and mm -hmm. the gun went off. Yeah. And well, like just he an accident. cut up the body and disposed of it and like he didn't even get charged with murder. He was getting charged with like abuse of a cor ab misuse right. of a corpse or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's like I mean, even in the United States, I don't know what it's like in Australia, but even in the United States, like, I couldn't just bury a loved one in the backyard. Like, right. there are places where you could bury 
someone mm-hmm. without it being in a cemetery, but like it varies right. state to state, county to county. Totally. You just, you have to follow certain laws. You can't just do whatever you want. And I think yeah. this guy, even the if way someone that, gives you permission. <laughs> yeah. The way he just like put this in the classifieds just was so fascinating to me. And he's Willy like, yeah, nilly. like it's hard, you know, <laughs> just like, yeah, like it's hard. Let's do this. Like what? I can get into Harvard. Like it's hard. He, <laughs> he just thought this was going to be such a simple process and like, Hey, Degrees. I know I'll probably have to like talk to a judge or something, but uh, you know, let's, I don't know. I just think he, as he is talking about white privilege, he is a, a white man, the picture of him. He is white as winter snow. I was like, you're exhibiting a little bit of privilege right there doing whatever you want to do. So anyway, I just thought it was an interesting story from down under. And I actually, we're staying in Australia because (gasps) I've got True crime time. It's time for true crime. One what thing. Time is it? True crime time. True crime time. Mm. One thing that uh, Lauren and I actually talked about this year when we are covering true crime, if we're covering any murders or serial killers, we're actually going to try and keep it to crimes where no one lost a loved one. Or the crimes are so old that the loved ones of the person person or persons who passed are no longer with us. Essentially, we've just seen a lot of discourse online, on TikTok, on Twitter, of people who have stumbled upon podcasts talking about a loved one of theirs who was murdered and how it didn't make them feel good. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking that into account when we cover true crime on this show because it can be salacious. And even though we've always tried to come at it very compassionate and like it's not funny, we do when we have true crime episodes, they're usually pretty somber. I still don't feel super comfortable talking true crime unless there's a purpose behind it. So, like, if there's an active a serial killer out there and we want to get information out about the people that they're targeting that's Mm -hmm. a a legitimate reason i think um if a story ends up with a really great lesson to be learned okay that has a purpose Mm -hmm. but just telling the story because it's scary and gross we're not going to do that anymore right this story (laughs) is scary and gross but Ooh. no one really gets hurt. So we're going <laughs> to okay. We're going to go with well, it. Well, great. <laughs> this story um I actually almost shared on a um last month's bonus episode with Amy Hanselman, but uh we kind of ran out of time, so I didn't get to. So I saved it for the main stage and I think it deserves it. This story is about the kidnapping of a young couple named Carolyn Watson and Julian Buckwald. But because of what takes place in the story, I'm absolutely calling him Julian Buckwild for the remainder of this episode. (laughs) (laughs) You have to. It's too close. Julian Buckwild. Buckwild. So, in May of 2008, Julian Buckwild, who was 22 at the time, invited his 17-year-old girlfriend, Carolyn Watson, which, ooh, guys, it's 2008. Have some respect. He took her on a romantic picnic date in the Australian countryside. They'd been together for two years, which, yes, does mean she was 15 and he was 20 when they got together, which is worse, Julian. I, yeah, I'm into that age difference. Anyway, they'd been together for two years. They were avid churchgoers and were saving themselves for marriage. So at least we have that. Okay. So on their way to the picnic spot, Buckwild Julian spotted a strange looking animal on the side of the road. So he decided to stop the car and check it out, which I appreciate as a yeah. cryptid lover. Mm-hmm. While he was outside the vehicle, though, checking on the animal, a balaclava masked man got into the car and tied up Carolyn and blindfolded her. He then stripped her of her clothes and threw her in the trunk of the car before driving off. Jeez. After driving for a while, the car stopped. The trunk was eventually opened, and Carolyn's blindfold was removed by her boyfriend, Julian, who was also naked, and said that they had been kidnapped by a satanic cult that took them to the middle of nowhere. He had managed to free himself in the back seat, 
got out and helped her do the same. But they were naked and in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, what and do you they do? ended up stuck out in the bushland for almost an entire week and they survived. Whoa. Like I said before, the couple were saving themselves for marriage to have sexual intercourse. But while they were lost out there, cold, naked, hungry, scared, old Buckwild continuously pushed the issue, suggesting that they sort of like get married, like marry themselves and consummate their marriage out there in an attempt to stay warm. As far as I know, Carolyn refused. But finally, after six and a half days stuck in the bushland of Australia with a crepizoid older boyfriend who kept trying to sleep with her, a That's farmer all to do. discovered the couple <laughs> and called the police. The police actually um, believed the whole story at first because during their investigation, they also found a letter at Carolyn's parents' house that was covered in what they believed to be satanic markings. So they really were looking for this satanic cult that kidnapped these kids but the police still had their suspicions because not all cops are horrible at their jobs and they pushed <laughs> old Buckwild again for answers and he finally admitted he staged the entire kidnapping himself in an attempt it. to convince his 17 year old girlfriend to sleep to with, have him. Sex with him yep very cool coming. cool guy julian cool guy that is <laughs> are you the kidding me the lengths men will go to. <laughs> just I find just, a woman uh, your own age and have sex yeah, consensually maybe, with her. I don't know. Maybe it'll be okay then. But that, it's just, it's not even surprising in the slightest. That's what's sad. Oh, no. No, I'm not surprised. Oh, uh, can't. Buck Wilde was found guilty of kidnapping and remained free on bail, but he missed his court date for sentencing, and it was discovered he had fled the country. Yeah. He was finally arrested in Singapore where he had been hiding we'll try it again he was finally arrested in Singapore where he had been hiding under the guise of an Indian man in full brown face just another cool thing Julian My. did he had obtained an Indian passport dyed his hair darkened his eyebrows and often wore dark foundation Luckily, he was caught, not because I think he's dangerous per se, but because he's an idiot. What a dumbo. Um, what an idiot. And because of the whole, like, evading the police, fleeing the country thing, being tacked onto his crime, he ended up sentenced to eight years and three months in prison. And oh, um, the gosh. latest news I could find on Mr. Buckwild is that he lost his appeal in 2018. It was refused unanimously by all three justices we love to hear that womp womp. man that could have also been a lauren's derp corner because what a derpy what a derp. damn fool that is so what a cool guy <laughs> staged cool guy, a kidnapping to try and get his 17 year old girlfriend to sleep with him actively did brown face posing actively as an indian did brown man. face <laughs> how do you get to singapore Fled the I'm country just... Yeah, oh my I gosh. not cool. Um, not but he's still the most in prison. Guy. I think. I mean, Rot. he's gonna be close to getting out, right? Hold on. This w well, he might be out if he behaved himself. He might be out. So keep an eye yeah. out for this guy. I'll put a picture of him up right now. Beep. Keep an eye yeah. out for that guy. He's a real creepazoid. Don't believe him. If you wake up naked in a trunk. Don't believe a word he says. You were not kidnapped. He did it all himself. Honestly, I'll be surprised if he's out because who would have good behavior? Not that guy. He can't seem to do anything can't normal. Seem to get together. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is insane. As soon as you said he was trying to push the idea of the wedding and like consummating the marriage out in the desert, I was like, oh no. Julian definitely did this, didn't he? Like was, I almost feel it, like it was like night one and they're out there and they're cold and he's like, if we had sex, like we could warm up. And she was like, ew, no. And then he was like, fuck. Yeah, and then they're fucking we, I have to be out here for six, six and days. And a half days. I just can't believe that he stayed like he had to have had the ability to leave. I don't know. Listen, I know. I'm like, what was his what backup? He got. he got locked up. I really I have no idea. I have, yeah, a just a lot man. of questions for that guy. I don't think he really thought it through, but. No. 
<laughs> oh, that was that was a good one. Yeah. And now Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries. I had not even gotten the words out asking for Ashley's help and she was on it. <laughs> we are. Ready. Unsolved Mysteries, everybody. We are headed to Arkansas. 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 Some ghosty, maybe, oh. or alien. Oh. Who knows? But a light. A light oh, phenomenon in Arkansas. Okay. That's what we're talking about. I know. <laughs> this excited me. <laughs> it was another, similar to your mystery that you had brought the show. I was like, how did I not know about this? And maybe you will know about this because it was on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries, but long okay. ago in 1994. And I had missed this Actually, episode. Actually, so I might know exactly what episode you're talking about, but go on and we'll see. So Arkansas has a lot of hauntings going on and I, really? it's one of those places that I do want to visit because I feel like yeah I they have quite a list of weird happenings which I enjoy I didn't know it was such a weirdo place but the one that I'm talking about today it's called the Gurdon or Gurdon if we're like getting real midwest it's probably Gurdon ghost light okay Gurdon the Gurdon ghost light is a present phenomenon and not something that's only been seen in the past, which is a lot of Arkansas's weird things. Um, it has been seen on television, photographed by tourists, and generally accepted as existing, including Unsolved Mysteries. They came to town to document it in 1994. So the mystery is not whether it exists or not. The mystery is exactly what this light is, yeah. what it could be. So... The local people like to tell a legend to explain the light, um, but Unsolved Mysteries told a little bit different of one. But a common theme to both legends is that a, a ghostly apparition is that the light is a ghostly apparition that is a railway worker from the mm. past. The location of the light is still in use by the railways, and the way the light moves could remind you of a railway worker carrying a lantern. Okay. That's maybe swinging back and forth in the night. One of the legends is historically accurate. In 1931, a man named William McLean, a Missouri Pacific Railroad foreman, fired a man named Lewis McBride. McLean and McBride. <laughs> and McBride a, was angered over the firing, of yeah. course, and killed McLean. Oh, and the events leading up to the murder are a bit sketchy. So some sources say the argument was because McBride sabotaged a section of track and caused a derailment. Others say McBride was asking for more hours and McLean simply couldn't give them to him. And an article from the Southern Standard, which is an old, old, old newspaper um, from 1932, states that McBride told the sheriff that he killed McLean because McLean accused him of being the reason that there was a train accident just a few days prior. So... It's one of those you things. Know, I feel like it doesn't matter at this point why you did it. You still killed you a man. You killed a guy, sir. and I feel like you're you you're, your you're in the wrong. Yeah, like we're <laughs> just gonna accept uh, you're a murderer. At this point, I do not care <laughs> why you were right. fired. The fact that you murdered him <laughs> after being fired makes me think that yep. maybe he had a reason to fire you in the first place. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree there. Like, sorry about you, McBride. <clears throat> so either way, again, like Ashley said, who cares? Either way, McLean was beaten to death with a railroad oh, spike. God. Ow. And McBride was later sentenced to death by electrocution executed in 1932. So the Gurdon Light was actually first documented shortly after he was executed mm -hmm. in the later 1930s. So it is theorized that the light is McLean haunting the tracks and carrying the same lantern he would have carried for work. And the theory that locals toss around is shorter on historical accuracy, but still interesting, saying that a railroad worker was working outside of the town one night and he accidentally fell into the path of a train and his head was severed from his body. Oh my God, like Sean William Scott in Final Destination. <sighs> Terrible way to go, Sean William Scott. It 
is rough. That, it would hurt. It would hurt a bit. Actually, I don't know. Maybe when you get decapitated, you don't feel. I was gonna thing, say honestly, gonna... I can think of worse. I would rather get decapitated than drown. Yeah. Same. Like the slow agonizing. No. Yeah. Yeah. Make it quick with a train decapitation. Train decapitation all the way, man. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> Um, so this legend goes that they were never able to find his head. So the light is actually the light from his lantern as he walks down the track Looking searching for, for his, his head. missing head. That's spooky. It's fairly common for railway workers to, to be injured or even head. killed. Oh. So, And to look for their own heads <laughs> by the light of a lantern. <laughs> I need to be like holding a flashlight under my face right now for the story. But the the light cannot be seen from the highway. Okay. You have to go to it. It's two and a half. It's a two and a half mile hike to the place where you can view the mysterious lantern or light or whatever it may be. You will pass by two trestles before it is seen, and the spot is mar- marked by a slight incline in the railroad tracks and then a long hill. And the light is an eerie white blue light, which sometimes can appear orangish. So very vague because there are so many different descriptions. But everyone agrees that the light sways back and forth and moves around on the horizon. And the light is frequently seen on the darkest nights and best seen when it is cloudy and overcast. And you can check out different maps and different, you know, information before you go just by Googling Gert and Light. It'll tell you all about the location. But also, apparently, if you just go into town in Arkansas, like everybody in the Gurdon area knows exactly what you're talking about. And it's like, hey, how do I hike to the light? And they're like, oh, this way. So you will easily be pointed in the right direction if you're ever visiting Is it Arkansas. dangerous? Um, do you, like have people, no one's died not. out there like trying to see the light, right? Seems like a bunch of drunk nobody kids has died right? trying okay, to see well, the light. Good. I know it's you would think, like with the train, train tracks track. being right yeah. there. <laughs> Seems yes, and I think you can stand off like right. to the okay. side you enough of to the railroad tracks be fine. <laughs> Obviously, if you're no, if you're a Dumbo, you could still fall onto the track. So it's not that it's impossible. You're totally right. But I haven't, I couldn't find okay. anything on people being killed well, or badly hurt. So it's not you're, a you're able light. to go see it and stay safe. Nope, it's not vengeful. It's just I do, by the way, totally remember this episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Mm -hmm. You do? Okay. I was like, I don't know how I missed this one, but I want to go back and watch it. I remember they have either photographs or footage because I remember distinctly the railroad tracks and the light. (sighs) Yes. And... And that's the thing. Again, it's not the mystery of like, can you find it? Like people can direct you to exactly where it is and Unsolved Mysteries got footage of it. But yet both the show and even some scientists who have gone to the area and checked it out, they've all seen it, but they still don't know what it is. It still cannot Mm. be explained. Um, You know, there's all the local lore and the fun stuff to believe, but it's like, but no, what is actually happening here? And nobody can figure it out. The leading theory is that it is just highway lights reflecting through the trees, but then historians try to jump in and disagree, saying that the light has been written about and spoken about since before the highway was even there. You know, we were talking about 1932. So that can't be it, but people are sure. It's like, it's just the lights. The highway's right over there. And then scientists have tried to explain the light and concluded also it is most likely not highway lights. There was a graduate student from Henderson State University who was doing research on the light who stated, the nearest interstate to the tracks is about four miles away Mm -hmm. and a large hill stands in between the tracks and the interstate. So if the light was caused by passing headlights, it would have to be refracted up and over the hill to be visible on the other side. So I don't think that's it. So that one is trying to get shut down. There was also a man named Dr. Charles Lemming, a professor of physics at Henderson State University, who used to be the authority on the light before his passing. And he and his students did many observations of it. And one impressive find was that when the light was viewed through filters, the lights never polarized. So any mirage light would polarize. And they also found that no electromagnetic current on a galvanometer, is that how you say it? I don't know, but that's what I was thinking is possibly because of the metal rails of the train track. Right. Like ball lightning? Um, Apparently, they could could find no current. So so the light appears consistently regardless of atmospheric conditions. So it is 
It's not polarizing. It's staying consistent. It's like everything that they were trying on it. It's a consistent swaying little light out there. They couldn't really do anything to it. Um, so then one of the last theories is, uh, there is a suggestion that quartz crystals underneath Gurdon causes them to oh. emit electricity and produce the light. They call this the piezoelectric effect. And the theory is that the new Madrid fault, which runs through this area, puts intense pressure on the crystals and squeezes them together, causing them to develop a charge and put off a spark. So that is a newer theory, but again, just not enough Still data to back it up yet. Studies will yeah. continue. Very theoretical. It's all just theories. But Gurdon, Arkansas, located 75 miles south of Little Rock, on Interstate 30, just east of the interstate on Highway 67. That is some general information about the light. It's just outside of town along a stretch of railroad tracks. It'll take you some time to reach the location. But again, some friendly Arkansas people can direct you over there if you want <laughs> to find it. And just do your own Googling. You can also leave the people of Arkansas alone and find it your damn self. But the Gurdon Light. I bet they love there. it when people come to town and ask about the Gurdon why? Light, though. I know I, I know. would. I bet they do too. I would if be I was excited. That guy yeah, who's like, known as like the expert on the light. I was just thinking, like, I would like Doctor Charles. Doctor Charles. I would start. I would have like talks about it. I would have like speeches about the light, mm -hmm. and and I would come out to like this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. <laughs> I'm this let little it shine. Light of mine. Good and light. It's the good and light. <laughs> yeah. I I would be the same. I thought that when it was like this guy was the authority on the light. I would, I want to be the love authority. That reputation. I would want to talk on a about it. Ghost I light. Ghost or anything, light. Really. Yeah. Apparently, the locals like everyone else kind of calls it the garden light or the ghost light, but they locals call it the ghost light bluffs, oh. and they will direct you right over there. So Fucking I love it. I would have loved this. I think of the small town that I went to high school mm -hmm. in, good old Metamora, Illinois. If we had a freaking ghost light that made people from all over come yeah. to town. Like, hey, we, we'd make a little we money. We actually did. The tourists in. Um, be in Centralia, we have an area. Um, I don't think anyone's like professionally investigated it though so it really might be one of those things where like it's lights from the highway and like even though the highway's over here it's an optical illusion and it comes from over here um but yeah it's this like road in the middle of freaking nowhere that you can go out to and it also happens to have it's like a gravity falls situation it also happens to have a weird gravity thing where you look like you're mm -hmm. going downhill, but really you're going uphill. So your car rolls back. Yeah, up. yeah. So that stuff always freaks but me. But putting out. the two together, yep. like ghost lights and the gravity situation, like it makes it a pretty spooky experience. But I, you know, yes. I don't know who knows what's going on out there. Who knows who what it knows is? But it sounds happening. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to go. Yeah. We're going to have to do an Arkansas trip on our, like, weirdo road trip that we are absolutely taking when we're both not going to a thousand weddings. Yeah. and think. we have money and time. It is a a nine-hour drive for me. Son of a bitch! I thought it was going to be closer. <laughs> I know. I actually did, too. But that's why it's going to have to be part of a, a longer road trip where we yeah. stay overnight at places. We don't go make it south. feel too bad. We'll look we for eat the a fun Big Muddy Monster. We'll go to Tennessee, visit the Bell Witch. Yep. We'll swing down to Arkansas, mm -hmm. see the Garden Light. Yeah, we're, yep. you know what? We'll have a really nice little field trip. Weirdo <laughs> road trip. <laughs> Lined up. Going down. Okay, our last um, uh, uh, segment of the day. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I as feel all right. I feel okay. Feel okay. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like the world just keeps ending and we just keep surviving somehow. So. Right. <laughs> Yet we're here. Yeah. Or, or, or are, are we? Is this the afterlife? Are we dead? Do you know what's weird? So for um, a week or so after the fire, I would randomly get really, really hot. Almost like, not feverish though, because you know when you're feverish, you kind of feel it in the back of your neck and you feel not hot. You feel kind of right. cold and clammy. I would feel like I was on fire, mm -hmm. like I was burning up and like I could feel my skin. It was really hot. Jeez. And I thought to myself, what if this is a Beetlejuice situation and I died and I'm just burning 
burning coals inside. You're burning in the flames. And yeah, your body is trying to tell you like, you're dead yeah. from this yeah. fire. Feel the yeah. flames, feel the heat. Yeah. But I saw you, so okay. am I dead? Well, I don't know. All, I don't I have all have the answers, in the Lauren. car on the way over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but there could anyway. be a timeline in which I'm, you know, passed on. True. True. True, true, true. Anyways, it is the end of the world. Actually, it's not the end of the world. The world ended in 1908. This is something I've always heard the name of, but I never actually knew what it was or what it was referencing. Have you ever heard of the Tunguska event? No. Okay, well. Tunguska event? This sucks. Um, it is so weird and so <laughs> scary. <laughs> oh, no. This sucks. This sucks. All right. So in 1908, on June 30th, just after 7 a.m. in Siberia, the fucking world ended. I'm not kidding. An enormous explosion took place. It flattened more than 80 million trees in seconds over an Dang. area that spanned almost 800 miles. Okay. The explosion was so intense that if a person was standing on their porch over 40 miles away, they'd be blown into the yard and the heat would be so intense it would feel like their shirt was on fire. And we know this from firsthand accounts of people who survived that were 40 miles away from the blast zone. Wow. The biggest theory is a meteorite, but no one has ever found any debris and there is no crater. But they were able to find the center of the blast based on how the trees were laying. Because like I said, 80 million trees were laying flat on the ground in a radial pattern, pointing, all pointing away from the epicenter of this explosion. Their limbs, That is so bizarre and terrifying. scary. Okay. Oh my gosh, to see that visual. And that there are be... pictures, you can look it up, their limbs oh, and bark. No were totally stripped away in this explosion. So it looks like 80 million telephone poles laying on their side. Good gravy. The seismic shockwave registered as far away as England. Okay. Excuse you? And the night skies glowed so brightly that reports came in from people as far as Asia that could read a newspaper outdoors at midnight. Oh, and right. Lauren... The craziest thing of all is that we don't even know what the fuck happened. How? How do we not know? We got theories. All we right. have theories. Bring them on. We Hey, this is the episode of theories. Let's <laughs> chat about it. Luckily, this happened over remote forests, so it didn't also kill millions of people, but it killed a shit ton of wildlife, like all the wildlife. Oh, jeez. But because of how remote it was, it actually took 19 years to even investigate it. Again, this was 1908. So wow. the very first yeah. scientific expedition to the area was in 1921. And it was led by the chief curator for the meteorite collection of the St. Petersburg Museum. His name was Leonid Kulik. And it failed because the harsh conditions of the Siberian outback proved to be way too much to handle and they weren't even able to reach the area of the blast. So, in 1927, six years later, they tried again. They went to the locals to try and get first-hand accounts of what happened, but they were extremely reluctant to talk about it because most of the locals believed that the blast was a visitation by a god named Agdi, who had cursed the area by smashing trees and killing animals, which I don't fucking blame sure. them because how... How can You're you... just trying to make sense of it. <laughs> like, How yeah, sure. It this? was this angry, this angry God. Like, we did something wrong. Yeah, might as well be because we don't know. Yeah. Scientists' best guess is that a large space rock, and I'm talking like 120 feet wide, 220 million pounds, entered the Earth's atmosphere of Siberia and detonated in the sky. Because there's no crater, but also there's no mm -hmm. debris. So does that make sense either? No. I don't know. No. But they think it may have entered Earth's atmosphere traveling at a speed of 33,500 miles per hour, heating the air to about 44,500 degrees Fahrenheit, and that the energy released was that of about 185 Hiroshima bombs. But that is our best 
fucking guess. That's the best guess. That's all we, we got. Just have no idea. I mean, it's 1908. Oh we didn't have an yeah, atomic bomb. We didn't bomb. have the ability to. Yeah. Nothing. Like what? As far as we knew, this what? goose was impossible. <laughs> this couldn't happen. Yeah, because I'm like, there's no natural disaster that would have had that same impact. Like, there's nothing that adds up here. It's like 185 Hiroshima bombs went off in the middle of this forest, flattened everything for 800 miles, but there's no crater to show anything hit the earth, and there's no debris of any any meteorite, which I would think if it exploded in the sky, you'd find meteorite debris. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine there would be debris, but also I don't know anything about meteors. Yeah, but if it wasn't and that, what, would happen, what so. the fuck was it? And also, can it happen again? Like, right? That's that my big does question. Feel like the end of the freaking world, Lord. <laughs> can it happen again? Oh my gosh! Can't, please no! Please not anywhere near me. So yeah, that's the Tunguska I... event, and I just I can't believe our best answer is like, well, it might have been a rock. It was probably this rock, but uh, that's it. Have a nice day. No, like we have to. No, I need to I know, know it more. happened a long time ago, but I feel like the new knowledge that we have now and the scientific advancements, can't we like come up with a better hypothesis? We have to have a way to get I want to see theory. photos of the area now as well, because I could only really find Agreed. pictures of. From when it happened. Yeah, like black and white pictures. Well, I'm like scared from to look when it happened. The trees. But the trees are scary. They're quite frightening. Also, I realized this did, as you were talking, I was like, why does this sound familiar? But we were going to do a disasters episode right before the world shut down in 2020. We were scheduled yeah. to do a disasters episode and you were going to talk about this. And that's why I had heard about it. Hold on. Breaking news. News7.com. Tunguska event was a mysterious blast caused by aliens. Now, I didn't research this angle. But I better get in here. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me see Let's what there. Okay, it says. There are many people who build. Ooh, this scenario. guy, Krenikov. Oh wait, no, this is what you were talking. That's about. what I'm An reading. An asteroid I think. that grazed the Earth. <gasps> oh, never mind. An asteroid that may have grazed the Earth. Well, that's kind of the theory that I had. They said it exploded in the sky. Right. Maybe it just like yeah. So that's why I said I think I was Earth. reading the same thing. Yeah, and bounce. Could it like bounce off our atmosphere? Did a little bounce, like whoopsies. <laughs> I don't know. How does it that work? It says that after World War II, they searched again, um, but it proved to be fruitless. Oh, this guy didn't even tell. Oh, read more. Hold on. I'm just saying. No, so, 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 so. Well, I have to see why he thinks it's aliens. Does he have? I mean, I know he doesn't have evidence of that, but why? This guy's got nothing. He's basically me, where it's like, what if it was what aliens? And it's like, what's why? Why'd you come to that? And it's like, cause nothing but else But why? Makes yeah. Sense. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's. But fair. I need a little Actually, more you know research. <laughs> they can't come up with anything. Why not? Hey, you know what? Know. It was so we're fucking just, fairies. We're just going to say it. It was fairies. It was the fairies. They they dropped something that grazed the earth. Maybe it was a banshee scream. Sprinkled some dust. We don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, Could have been anything. talking about banshees. Ban- banshee scream caused the trees to the bend trees over. The trees to bend backwards. over that backwards. It. That was it. Regardless um, of what happened, it's we do weird. pray that it doesn't happen <clears throat> again. Um, and if it does... We are not in that 800-mile radius. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can it not be near Ashley and myself? Because we don't handle that stuff I, like other people do. I was going to say, don't we don't handle, handle that well. well. But, you know, other people the will be just fine. The handle fine. it so much better than us. Really, I mean, they probably honestly. would. They're tougher. They, yeah, that's they're probably a little tougher sure. than me. I am shuffling my cards, getting ready, guys. That's all the time we have this week for Keep It Weird, but stay tuned. We are going to test our psychic abilities once again. Um, It's going so well so far that we're going to keep doing it. (laughs) 
<laughs> in the meantime, the make star. sure. star. <laughs> it's cursed us. If it's a fucking star, I'm going to lose my mind. Make sure that you're following us on social media at Keep It Weird Cast on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, um, where we share um, upcoming episode news. We'll ask for your input on things. Right now, we've got uh, Facebook. Well, not right now. This is going to be a long time for right now at the moment of recording. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. We have a, Grow up. <laughs> a question in our uh, Instagram stories. We're asking you guys to submit questions to the show. You can also uh, email us anytime at keepitweirdpodcast at gmail.com. You can also call our new number, 626-686-1821. You can leave us a voicemail that we might play on a later episode um, and ask any questions you want. It could be a question that you want to hear us ask each other on the show. It could be a topic you'd like us to research. You can leave us your scary story. If you have a scary story you'd like to submit for listener ghost Please. stories, you could just call and say hi. We just kind of want to hear your voices and Love become friends with you. Um yeah. <laughs> also, donate to our Patreon, www.patreon.com slash keepitweirdpodcast. You can donate $1, $5, or $10 one time, or set it up to donate monthly, and then you'll receive bonus episodes, a newsletter. And when you when I say you receive bonus episodes, we do release two bonus episodes a month. We You also get access to every bonus episode we've ever recorded. So there's like 100 ever. episodes on there you haven't heard before which is pretty cool um and, the and cutest newsletter of the all cutest time. newsletter of all time i've never seen a cuter one i dare you to show me a cuter Adorable. newsletter than ours um and then finally <laughs> finally uh like this video and subscribe please to our youtube channel we're trying to build this up and make it just another facet of the strange and unusual this wonderful world of weird in which we live wonderful world of <laughs> <laughs> but now wonderfully weird world oh, where we live it's hive mind it's time for hive mind lauren and i have been told many times we have a hive mind for example in between the episodes we just recorded we went to go pee guess what we sat down at the same time. We even have the same pee schedule. We pee the same amount. Exact same time. And we sat down the same way where we were like 80-year-old women <laughs> and we got in our chairs like, <laughs> and then just stared at each other in the face. It was magic. It was special. So today it's my mm -hmm. turn. I'm going to try and send Lauren a psychic message. We're still working off of Ooh, our original okay. <clears throat> prompt, which is to relax, clear our minds clear our heads don't listen don't look close your eyes and we're going to try and send this message psychically to lauren with a zener card which if you don't know what that is go back to any episode before this okay are you ready to receive my psychic message yes okay. yes i am feel like i'm getting a mixed message i genuinely am like seeing two okay, pictures gonna, this is just I'm me get, being like in my no, head no i'm gonna Hold get on. even more specific ready plus sign hmm, didn't get so Dang specific it. enough <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of that shape I, possibly you were saying the opposite of the shape opposite. <laughs> i what were thought you saying i in your head? well that's so funny i <laughs> I was seeing a cross between the plus sign and the square, so I'm like trying to like mm. somehow make that I was like was the, maybe plus the plus sign, sign bringing the square <laughs> into the... no. Maybe it was like it was a zodiac a... symbol you were seeing. Yeah. I yeah. Okay. Well, I swear. You know I was what? like, I swear I see a square with a plus sign inside. I was seeing a window. I saw a window. Okay. That's all it was. The evidence is pointing to the fact that we are not psychic at this juncture. Okay. But well, that doesn't you know mean what? we're going to keep trying. We're going to give up. Next episode, I'm going to have a new tactic we're going to try to send these psychic messages. Um, and, you know, we're, gonna we're pretty much going to be experts by June. So, in the meantime, mm -hmm. I hope you guys have a really great week. And you always remember to keep, keep it, it weird. weird. <laughs>